Welcome to the next episode of The Teacher Zone with Chris and Tyler. I'm Tyler Maroff, the co-host, along with Chris Bates. Chris, how are you today? Well, I am amazing. We have a very special guest today. Tyler, why don't you introduce our guest? So we want to say a big hello and thank you for coming on the show. It's Liz Oberreiter, who is the Senior Director at WASC. What is WASC? It's an acronym like everything else, right? It. She is the Senior Director of uh, at Western Association of Schools and Colleges. I always get that wrong, but I'm going to say it again. Western Association of Schools and Colleges. And just so happens to be one of our partners with our lesson business, Los Rios mm -hmm. Rock School. So, Chris, we got accredited with WASC about... I think four years ago. Well, we have our walkthrough coming. So does that mean five years is coming up? Six. Yes. Yes. So Liz, say hi Six. to everyone. Oh, Welcome wow. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, allowing me to be part of your podcast. I'm super excited uh, to be here and share uh, anything and everything that you need to know about uh, what I do and why we do it and why WASC is so important to uh, not only schools, but supplementary education programs such as Los Rios Rock is. Yep. Mm -hmm. So check this out. On top of that, she says the why, she says the where. We're also going to kind of get into the how because a lot of people listening right now may be like, okay, what does this mean? What am I listening to? Well, uh, being a supplemental accredited uh, learning school. So we call them SEPs, right, Liz? Yes, yes, we do. Education program. Well, what are we supplementing? Because um, WASC also accredits K through 12 schools, junior colleges, colleges, uh, Chapman University, I believe, St. Mary's, and so on and so forth. So it's a big organization of accreditation. But today... Is it, uh, over 5,000 or, so, or something like that? What okay, so there's, there's, there's three divisions. There's the senior... WASC, then there's a junior WASC, and then there's the Accrediting Commission of Schools, our WASC, that is K through 12. So we have over 5,000 schools worldwide, uh, schools and supplemental programs as well. Got it. Very and we're cool. going to get into what a supplemental program is, especially our our fan base, the pe the listeners who listen to the Teacher Zone are usually, and, and we briefed Liz on this, are lesson business owners or educators or both all over the world that are trying to grow and create an extraordinary lesson business experience for the people they're teaching. So we're talking once in a lifetime moments, unbelievable relationships with their teachers, uh, awesome ops, uh, everything inside of these schools. So a lot of our listeners, we're talking to you, that's who you are. <laughs> So if you're not accredited, well, let's talk about what that means. So yeah. let's expand, Liz. Supplemental education. Well, I'll give one example, and then you could give me some other examples. Los Rios Rock School, we sign transcripts for AP theory for some students that could not either A, access it at their school period, their high school didn't have it, um, you know, the arts are being taken away and things like that. So it just wasn't there or they, uh, their counselors getting them ready for college. And that AP theory course couldn't fit in the, in the GE load or some, something. So what did we do? We're a sub, we're an SEP. We found, we organized, got the curriculum ready. Uh, Dr. Haycraft taught the SEP AP theory class and then they went and tested in this case they tested off-site at an Irvine school we found the one that would approve it they all showed up took their test they all passed we signed their accreditation they were done so that's the that's the way we've used it besides the fact that you guys have strengthened our goals in the last six years so that's another thing we'll get into later you all through your walkthroughs and the updates with your PhDs have allowed us to improve our goals from little obvious things like escape routes in a fire or uh, attendance taking. Do we know where everybody was and will be? Um, I, and so, so we're so, I just want to say thank you for that. We wouldn't have had that structure to get us 
clean cut as we, and we've always thought about that, but you helped us get there. So that's our Los Rios experience, everybody. I'm gonna let Liz and, and Chris have some fun with this. And let's see how this might help others around the world who are listening right now. So what are your thoughts, Liz? Can you get, uh, dive into SCP a little more for us? Of course. Thanks, Tyler. Um, so SCPs, um, like you indicated, Tyler, are um, have, have come into existence many, many more places now because schools um, are num- – one or the other are unable to offer a specific course because there aren't that many teachers that could teach a specific course. Let's just say hypothetically Mandarin. Okay. Um, Mandarin, um, it's it's hard to find a good Mandarin teacher. And if you just have one class, a high school is not gonna hire a a part-time Mandarin teacher for one class. And then this poor Mandarin teacher has to look for other places to go work. So right. that is where a supplementary education program, a Mandarin, a Mandarin um, school would open up. So um, also, like you had indicated, there are students that have severely, and I, I use that word because I always hear it, severely impacted schedules because mm-hmm. um, they want to take 10 AP courses. Uh, they want to be involved in activities. They're on the football team. They're in band, but they want this class they need this class and so this is where those supplementary education programs scps um, are able to offer these classes with a memorandum of understanding with the school with their home school their traditional site-based school that they will take those credits um and um and and so we we go from um scps that are language schools that are music schools that are um, dance schools um, and also your tutoring places. Those places that uh, students go to for that extra help because their parents don't know what to do. They're falling through the cracks at their local school. Nobody's paying attention to the student because this student is very quiet, um, but they're getting D's and F's. So then they take them to these programs and they get that extra help at the same time, the programs work with the schools to come up with a plan of action. So um, this is a very big growing area for us. Um, and we don't only have SEPs here in California. They're across the world. They're across the United States. And um, and, and again, it's it's growing and we're seeing a variety right now. And we're, so, we're seeing a lot of Hebrew language schools as well, which is kind of exciting as well. That, that is cool. That, well, it, it seems like today, I, you know, I don't know uh, if I, you, like you said, you're seeing a lot of growth. Doesn't it seem like today there's more, much more opportunity for learning just about anything you want? Um, it seems to me like the access today is is just incredible um, with, with, you know, all the different things that everything from the arts to language to the athletics to different STEM tutoring programs and stuff like that. Um, it just seems like there's more access today. Do you think that's true? I think there's more access, not only in person, but virtually. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the virtual world, um, even though people think that it started with COVID and it really didn't, it, it started a while back. And those of us that were in the virtual world prior to this um, madness in the world, um, we um, we saw that it can work. You can teach virtually and it could be just as enriching as it would be um, if you're there in person. So um, we're seeing a lot of growth in that. And we're seeing a lot of growth because just like you had indicated, Tyler, some of the schools cannot offer these visual and performing arts. Um, they're cutting those programs. Um, Teachers are retiring. There aren't enough teachers. And so some of these teachers that have retired go into these supplementary education programs and teach these classes once or twice a week. Right. Mm. That's that's so that's changing the marketplace completely for staffing in general, not just we when we think school, we think school districts. And that's the foundation of everything. And it used to be everything was public schools, you know, and parochial schools were the minority. And now it's charter parochial public like it's it's just turned into because we have access like we were saying so quick question 
things such as these over impacted kids, these super ultra go getters with the super tiger moms and all of this and that. And they are club ice hockey and, you know, mm -hmm. soccer varsity and and 4.4 average grade point average and all this stuff. Well, they're doing a ton of stuff. So can places like if somebody's at an athletic supplemental program that does uh, jujitsu, karate is an active part of that. And they have metrics and measuring systems. Can athletics get involved as well to supplement because those kids need that AP English class and that, and that calculus class and they can't, and in order to make it in time, they can't take that PE hour. And if the school allows it, and I don't, I'm, I'm sure some states are different. They probably make you and things like that. There's probably different rules in different states, but could that also help a business, a lesson business that is more on the athletic side? Absolutely. A hundred percent. As long as they have that curriculum set, right. they have a means of measuring how right. the student has learned, which is the component of assessment. Okay. And and they meet all of the WASP guidelines of, of mm. really like what I said, curriculum assessment instruction. And you have that qualified instructor. It just can't be anybody who likes to do it, but isn't qualified to do it. So they've got to have that qualified instructor to do that. Gotcha. And then uh, how do you determine how do you determine the qualification for the instructor? That is up to the supplemental program. That is up to the uh, uh, SCP on how they hire. And so we go and we vet them and then we look at them and, and say, you know, why is this math teacher teaching AP English? Oh, they like teaching AP English. You go, no, 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 you need to have an English teacher that's trained to teach AP um, so or one, have a master's in, in English, I guess. Okay. Does, uh, so it, it seems to me, um, by the way, if you want to read more about WASC, you can go to the, uh, the website is ACS wasc.org so acswask.org and uh, i'm curious it seems like wasc you know um it really it, it's like you're not only holding everybody accountable but you're also trying to level everybody up is that true yeah we're we're not some some i i and i get this all the time especially from some of the um some of the schools and scps that are outside our country um, outside the U.S., thinking that we're like the police, like we're the auditors. <laughs> so, some of these folks call us the auditors. They go, no, 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 no. We're all about continuous improvement. How can we help you improve your program for that academic journey that they are having at your supplemental program? So we're all mm -hmm. about continuous improvement. And, and we're not there to, to check off the boxes, but we're there to have conversations with the schools and, and not just during our WASC visit, but it's all the time. We're a phone call away. And I know that sounds kind of, mm, mm. Kind of crazy, but, but we are, we're, we're kind of hokey there. Uh, we're, we're kind of, we're, we're there all the time. So if a what, school if wants a sounding board of a new program they want to offer, they, they call us. I, and then, so I'm sitting in the gym of uh, a school that my, my kid went to, and they had a WASP banner in the gym, for for example. As a parent, because what's really great is um, all of us that, that run these programs and own these programs, um, you know, we have that desire to be better, but is that what that, uh, how, what, what should that have meant to me when I saw the WASP? On that on that educational facility like what would make what, what would make that facility different than another school a worldwide organization that has schools around the world has validated your program um, in order to ensure that your students are have a high quality program that will lead them to the next steps whatever those steps are if it's a high school what's next it could be college or career so, so it's that validation of a worldwide accrediting agency. Mm. I love it. Brilliant. I gotta, I, I will add this. So when we approached you guys to get accredited, I didn't know what was going to happen. And I didn't think that you all caring. I don't know why I thought this, this is like a stigma. I think I think, you thought they were the police. 
I don't not no. I thought <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, but I, I, you know, I, you know, I get the, I get that feeling a little bit like uh oh they're gonna be no, looking up at, at everything. <laughs> more like um, bureaucratic red tape. Right. Period. And you know what? I'm not scared of the IRS. You just gotta follow the rules and and not let them take advantage of you. You know what I mean? So so I what I did. My point is my I didn't feel from the surface level because I was new, knew nothing about it, that you guys were going to care enough to help us level up. Didn't know that. Didn't, I, I guess I, in my old wise years of 45 now, I should know that, but this was when I was 39. So there's, oh, there, that's probably the answer. So, uh, uh, but, but I didn't get that. And then the results for those of you listening, we have improved our program th almost through osmosis in a way. Mm -hmm. Because we have to follow a certain template and it's not what you think. Los Rios Rocks will go to our website. No one tells us what to do. No one. C Chris, what happens when people try to tell you and me what to do? <laughs> it doesn't go well, up. That's why we're very we polite. But, but, uh, <clears throat> last night, <clears throat> excuse me, last night I actually brought up WASC with a, with a potential family because the student is super interested in theory. And so the student wants to really go deep with her supplemental education. And so it was a really great conversation because the parents were actually very impressed that we had taken the time to work with WASC. So, right. Some people get it. Um, but guys, whoever's listening out there, if, if you want that, because when you're approved, you get to, and we still have to do it. We need the graphic. We need to put it on our website. We need a sticker for the door. Do you guys have swag? Do you Sorry, we don't have any swag. I, I've been no, asking. No, no, no swag. <laughs> no swag. Sorry, not even a mug. Really? Okay. <laughs> Wask accredited sticker to put on the front door would be amazing. And uh, <laughs> not a, it's not a deal breaker. But uh, anyways, my point being is that if you're listening out there, we're going to get into the how a little bit, but now you're, you've kind of heard the who. We've heard who can do this a little bit, um, and we've also talked to who can help you. Here she is. Her team will help you. Chris gave you the website. So the question is, is how can you get accredited? We already know a little bit of the why, but how is it going to help you? Is and and uh, ready, yeah, and going to help your business grow, become more extraordinary, and I don't know, have that little extra clout. Maybe you only help with seven out of your 200 kids a year get signed transcripts, but you know what? Uh, for I think it's 1100 a year is what we pay, I believe, for our SCP. Is that correct, Liz? Um, I don't know, that's a different department. I'm sorry, okay. I'm not the money person. So there is Cost. But it's right around there. Yes, there's an because we're membership driven. We are membership so, driven, so it's an annual cost. Tyler, oh, wow. let's start. Uh, let, hold on, because you, you've you've got a lot to unpack yeah, right there. I'm so, a lot, Chris. <laughs> yeah, so let's start with the how. So let's start with the how. You, so you, Tyler, you talked about how nerve wracking it was, and so let's let's start from like day one. We have some sort of program that we're interested in being called an SEP and having the accreditation and having that cachet, like, 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 uh, you know, something that will help us level up and be better. What's step one? And what Tyler said earlier, um, would you speak to fears that people might have about making that first call? Okay. So, um, so we, we've, um, we've rebranded some, some of the, some of the areas to, to, to be a little more modern. Um, and so now, if a, if an SCP is desiring to start the process, they just go to our website, or they can they can go to our website and then go under uh, beginning the process, and then they can kind of look at um, how to fill out the application, et cetera, et cetera. Everything is online. So as soon as we get an interest in that. Um, then somebody in the office calls me or I look at our web or, or I look at our portal and say, oh, so-and-so school um, is interested in, in they, they filled out this application. So I now vet it. So now we're expecting the supplemental programs to have uh, a website. 
So, um, so I vetted through the website. Then I then I do a quick email. You have a website. <laughs> yeah, it's the website is really important because a lot of these don't have websites, especially if it's a, and and like if it's smaller. mom and pop tutoring tutoring right. program. So then, if not, um, I make the call and then we talk things out. And my first question is because we're. Yes, we do need to make money because we do need to stay afloat, but we also want to ensure, I always say, I always ask them, why do you want accreditation? And I know that sounds crazy, but that's my very first question I ask them, why do you want to be accredited? And many of them say, because our parents are asking mm. um, if we are WASC accredited. That's a big thing nowadays. The parents are now asking. Oh. So, um, so then as soon as we do that, then, um, they pay their application fee and then um, we start conversations and I look at who's going to do the visit. And it's usually one of my, um, one of my directors uh, down in Southern California that does the SCPs and along with myself. And then we start the conversation. Now it's very different Tyler than when you started, when you started, you were just given this template to fill out, et cetera, et cetera. We don't do that anymore. We send out the template then we work with the school and the, uh, the SCP and the SCP sends us sections of the template as they're filling it out. So Which we give them feedback right mm. now. For That's what you're going to be doing. Through. So uh, she's I, I can attest to this. The whole thing I was sitting there going, ah, oh, we're here again. Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, calling Dr. Haycraft. Hey, get ready. We've got the you know, we're, we're updating everything. They're going to walk through again. And the whole format was different. It was really, there was a, correct me if I'm wrong, a true growth and impact feeling to it more than before. Am I right? Is that kind of the difference of the vibe on that? Excellent. We, we've now streamlined the process to make it much more understandable for an SEP because it used to, the format used to look more like a school. And it was very difficult for SEPs to understand many of those sections because they did not relate to them. So now, now we've even used more business language instead of saying administration, we use leadership or management, uh -huh. um, et cetera, et cetera. So, so we've streamlined that process. We've made it much more focused into those specific areas and that's so generalized as a school. Um, so then, okay. So then as, as the SCP is going through the initial template, then, um, and we're working with them, we then ask for a date. So right now, as we're doing a lot of stuff virtually, it, things are virtual. So mm -hmm. we come up with a virtual visit and, and it can be spread out with, within a day, within a couple of days, uh, as we've now coined it, or my boss has coined it a progressive visit. So we have meetings a few days here, a few days there, um, in order to ensure that we are meeting with all stakeholders. So we talk to teachers, we talk to leadership, we talk to students, we talk to families. Um, and, and we say, you know, our conversations with them are all about improvement. What's one really great thing about this SCP? And what do you think this specific SCP, this specific program can do to improve itself, to improve not only that academic journey, for your student, but for the future students that are uh, that are coming. That right, right there, I mean, that one question, it's like uh, so many of us, especially as small business owners are running with, you know, like with our hair on fire and we aren't taking the time to ask that important question um, because, you know, pushing ourselves to be better, not just our students. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and, uh, and, other, and uh, very successful companies are paying marketing departments to routinely ask those questions. And mm -hmm. so it's awesome that you guys go deep with the families. And by the way, guys, uh, back up before the visits she just mentioned, when you're doing the templates, it's in sections. And um, yeah, like she said, they give feedback. Liz, and yeah, you do a section at a time and send it in. And if you're a little like maybe no fault of your own, you answered a certain way. And Liz is like, oh, you were looking at that a little differently. This is what we meant. They will help guide you through the sections so you don't have to. We're business owners. We have a lot going on. So that this change aspect, change can seem scary and not scary in a way like I'm scared it's going to hurt my business. More like how am I going to fit this in? 
how will I even do this with Liz? I can't get everything else I need done done. She and her team help you throughout it. So please you guys, know that. Uh, would it be right to call you because, you know, I heard you use the term partner, but it's also advocate. You guys are really an advocate for all of us. Right. We want we're, we're all about school improvement. We're all about program improvement. And and again, and it's just not what you're offering to the students, but it's how are you improving um, the professional development aspect of your own instructors? How are you helping them become better teachers for your students? Um, so there was one other area, and I think I just forgot what I was going to say, but um, of this whole continuous improvement process, oh, the template, that's what I was going to say, the template that, and, and the self-study, which Tyler, you guys are filling out now, it's a little different because now you have to answer some other types of questions, but that template for the initial or even the, the self-study is your story. So mm -hmm. that's the important part that you are telling your story within this template. So whoever reads this, we want you to be able to tell your story to an outsider and they will totally understand what you guys offer or what any SCP offers. Um, and with clarity, you're helping with clarity. A absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's so hard because, you know, we all tend to see ourselves differently than our students and parents often. And and so it's it's so hard to define when you know too much, right? You know, well, we teach these gazillion things. So a lot of programs are defining themselves too broad and you guys actually are helping clarify. That's brilliant. Well, and then at the end of your story, you have these areas that you're gonna work on for the next go around. Mm. So when we, when we were um, at Los Rios, uh, six, five or six years ago, there were a certain amount of goals of recommendations that were left for you to work on for the next six years. Right. So, and those are called action item plans. So for your action plan and your action. Okay. So your, your initial description report is your story. So when you start your self-study is your story, your action plan is what takes you to the future. Mm -hmm. So what are these areas that you want to improve on right. um, academically and for professional growth for your own instructors for the next go around? And you're going to be working um, with those. We're not other other accrediting agencies are all about checking off the boxes. OK, you're compliant here, you're compliant there, you're compliant here. They don't look at this narrative. They don't look at the full story. Mm -hmm. And well, that's all about, about continuous improvement. We're big. So there's two things that um, I want to en enhance there. Number one, continuous improvement. Tyler, I've talked about before. I don't know if you remember, Tony Robbins used to talk about Kanai, C-A-N-I, constant never ending improvement. Mm -hmm. And it's such a cool concept that, you know, if you're in education, you have to embody that. I personally, Tyler and I are big on culture. We're big on growing your engagement. So I wanted to, it, for those of you out there, you've heard us talk about Kanai. It sounds like you guys are, as an organization, really taking that to heart and making that it's like you said not just checking boxes um the the other thing that i really wanted to impart is that we are working with mostly your you know your larger entities so with teacher zone you know we help um scps all over the world that really often will have multiple instructors i'm curious uh though a lot of the programs don't necessarily have brick and mortar. So how do you handle the virtual and or off-site programs when it comes to like scheduling the site visit and their their vision and their story and all that kind of stuff? Is it different or? It it's the same process. It's just with the visit, it's virtual. So they get the same template. They get the same everything. It's just different. Just like I, I was asked this by... Um, a school in Denver, a very large school in Denver. They called me and said, oh, this student is taking this class in San Francisco area. It's one of your supplemental programs. Okay. So um, she's like, "Is this was a really great question this, this uh, district person asked. Um, is, is it any different? Is a supplementary education program accreditation any different than the school accreditation. 
It is not. They've got to follow our guidelines. The template is different because obviously you offer different things and, and, and it's not a K-12 site, but it's the same process. We expect um, high caliber, we ex but if it's not high caliber, it's okay. That's where this continuous improvement comes in. But the expectations are the same. So, and that's really yeah, I, important I, um, for I mean, everyone I, to I, know. That's major because I think, you know, this one of the biggest things that, you know, I, I think Tyler might have spoke to some of our fear initially when we contacted WASC. What's funny is a lot of us that are in this SCP type, you know, if you're doing any sort of um, extracurricular or after school or supplementary education, um, I a lot of us are actually doing deeper work. Right. It, I mean, it, the supplementary is real because we're actually going really deep with these students in these different, whether it's language or, or the arts or what have you. Most um, places that are popular, Chris, now are not linear anymore. Very project based, right. very culture based, very social based. Right. Um, right. You know, we're, uh, collab, 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 like and then with still getting measured results on an individual group basis. And, and then all of a sudden, everybody's like, I want to go there till I go to college that's i mean it's school i'm and, sorry and what's interesting I, is the public school, knows it the student knows. is not doing that where i mm. graduated from like mm. there are certain leaders inside that school that are still making impacts mm. but overall out of three thousand kids and x amount of teachers very drop in the bucket for the leadership affecting everyone because teachers are all different you know? Yeah. Well, a lot of a lot of schools don't have enough time to go into depth. Is I is is I think the the big point, and, and the fact true. that you guys are considering the SCPs at the same level to me is like super exciting because we actually Tyler and I are biased. We think the SCPs are actually stronger in a lot of areas just because of the extra time that we're able to take um, with students. So it's really well. Neat I, to I've got. I I've got to share with you, there was one SCP, and this was one of the very first ones I did um, several years ago uh, from the office. There was a, um, it, it is also music school, um, and they're also virtual all over the world. And one of the students uh, wanted, I was interviewing the student uh, during the visit, and uh, the student had prepared a special, uh, a song for me that he had created. So he actually played the song. I, I don't even know what time it was in Israel, um, but the father was next to him and he's like, he wrote this especially for this Waska visit. And it was so <laughs> beautiful. It was just so beautiful. Um, I couldn't, I could, and he was like nine or 10 years old and it was just, and he was so proud of himself. And I was like, wow, I wish I had that talent. But, um, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, tenacity and want to like there's so many elements that will give that child success in the future that's amazing absolutely we've got um several now language programs that are offering language lang language classes to a lot of charter schools throughout the united states but um they're also offering the same language courses in australia mm. so um we've got language teachers that are offering language classes here in the states but they're actually, part of a really cool thing is, um, these are some of the Spanish uh, language um, supplemental programs we have. These teachers are actually in um, Colombia, Peru, Spain, um, all over, and they're teaching not only the language, but they're actually engaging the students in that cultural aspect of it, mm -hmm. which you cannot oh. get in no. the brick and mortar. Right. Yeah. That's major. That's yep. amazing. Yeah, that really is. So, so now, um, okay. So that's you've gotten us to now, Tyler. I think the second part that you were talking about was um, having the benefit of having Wask as a partner um, long term. So, in other words, what does it actually mean? So, you know, you, it sounds like the scariest part, which is just going to the website and starting the process. Um, once you've done that and you worked on your story, I don't have reluctance to do that, by the way, let, let us just tell you, we've already been there. So just get mm. that out of your mind and just go. So go on, Chris. Well, and you know, you want to be better anyways, right? It's like, it's like the adage when people say, I don't want to go back to school. I'm going to be a certain age. It's like, well, you're going to be that age anyways. You might as well. Well, you know, you want to be better anyways. So make the call or go to the website. 
But once they've done that and they've gone through the process and, and approval is granted, what are some ways that you've seen um, the SEPs being able to successfully utilize WASC to, to their uh, school's benefit? Um, they use it on their website. They use it on their letterhead. They use it on anything and everything that we're with that they're allowed to use it in. Um, and um, it's it's that seal of approval. It's that golden Willy Wonka ticket that really really shows that validation of the program. Um, a lot it, of them it use it. Legitimizes in a lot of ways. Abs absolutely. Liz, I, I still talk. I'm still one of the first points of contact to brand new parents mm. who have heard about us. And, and, but the picture is so dense. Like I, we have to speak it or create some new marketing to just describe the three pillars of success inside our tuition monthly. Right. And you know what, Chris, I believe if we just pop that wasp stamp on, I can save my breath, at least half of it. <laughs> Why right. have we not done that yet? Mm -hmm. We've been accredited for almost six years and we've not put your graphic anywhere. And that's our fault. So really, I think from that sales upfront storytelling perspective, um, even if people still might have assumptions of what it means, but they know you earned it. That's not fake. Right. Like that was what the dad said last night. He goes, wow, you guys aren't messing around. I said, no, sir, we're not. <laughs> so, you know, it's a because with a lot of programs over the years, you know, um, well, let's face it. What makes a small business owner typically is they saw a need. And so a lot of educators and a lot of folks that started their own education program, it's because they felt a certain maybe more in-depth need wasn't being met. And so that's typically how businesses begin. They, they solve a challenge. And so it's it's like coming full circle because a lot of I, I know a lot of our customers, Tyler, started off right at a more traditional educational environment and then became entrepreneurs. We actually call it from chaos to culture. So they, they went from pulling their hair out to actually having a great culture. <laughs> and so WASP can be a great part of having that culture great um, tool. now that they've so gone through that journey. That's cool. Let's talk about, let's get to the nitty gritty. So about 1100 a year is the cost. That's a nitty gritty thing. That, that's the money. Everybody like there's nothing's for free. Now, it, it, well, and, and, and things change only, only if you might be listening to this later. Cause I know Liz, that, that's what you meant is that uh, the pricing is on the website. So go to the website and see current right. pricing. Stuff. Either way, you're, you're paying your dues. That's how they stay alive. You understand this. You own a business. Um, mm -hmm. So we have that. Now let's talk about who wouldn't qualify. And remember, it's case by case. So they're gonna, you fill it out. She's gonna look, Liz will look, her team will look, they'll give you a call. Um, and we're also gonna talk about straight up how TeacherZone helped us with our accreditation. So TeacherZone.com is Chris and our software. And be, when WASP came in and they were like, they came in so, um, I can't remember the doctor that came in. You knew him. You said his name the other day. Just a happy-go-lucky guy. Made us yes, feel yeah. calm. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but, but he was all business behind that smile. Like, no joke. And when we, when we showed him and explained, even though it was already in our goals and whatever, the software that we created and put in place that every soul is accounted for that all curriculums are monitored, that updates and check-ins and accountability were all in one spot. Like it reflects back to when I was in high school and they would, uh, which is a billion years ago, but they'd fill a Scantron out of who is there or not. Boom, and every single class, not just so the teachers could get paid and the district would pay them and blah. That you're negligent if you don't do that. You're in the wild west with someone's child. And so when we showed Wasps that we meant business and we created this thing, and by the way, you don't have to create your own, just use ours. Uh, they were like, okay, well that checks off like all of the technical stuff. You know what I mean? That's great. And the one thing we didn't have set up, which Wasps helped us know we needed was our own department of justice uh, 
code. So we always had people getting live scanned, fingerprinted always, but we were having them bring us theirs, which technically is not the right step mm -hmm. to do. And so that was one of our goals. Which that was, a, that was really helpful. That was a really, oh, just little yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I slept better at night. I always wondered, is that all the way right? You know, <laughs> and so that was one of our action goals that we set and we met within six months after that visit, by the way. And oh man, everything just started to glue together. So TeacherZone helped us just by having the software in place, the teachers taking attendance, the reporting going back to all times past and moving forward chats and group chats all monitored by parents and students can't be deleted etc they took us seriously that little section of our of our story wask was like kudos <laughs> okay that's not all of it that's not everything we need but that's freaking good and so, so that yeah yeah uh, well ahead. he was just uh support you on that um so you know we actually started really getting granular at about the same time that we were meeting with WA. So it was kind of the that moment where we were in transition too. So uh, for those of you, if you're not doing it, I can tell you like for our families, like as a parent, while Tyler was talking, I quickly pulled in teachers on my oldest son who's getting ready to go. He's getting ready to go to uh, Kansas University. He's gonna be a Jayhawk. So uh, he, I just pulled him at our school and he's had Guess how many hours in the last uh, five years, Tyler? Uh, I, I don't know. 595.5 hours of instruction at our school. For a supplemental, that's incredible. That's huge. Yeah. The, and, that's a lot of learning. And we have, and, and I won't go into it, but obviously you could get granular with all that learning. And so it's not only important to have accountability for your staff to get better, but the families relish it. Like as a parent, it may, it just warmed my heart to see that. I was like, wow, he's gotten a lot of great instruction. So shameless plug, Liz, if somebody called you and they already had Teacher Zone working and implemented teachers in, student accounts in, attendance being taken, curriculum being assigned, would that be a help? In getting qualified for WASP? Yes, it would be a huge help because we're looking at that accountability aspect of it. That's huge. Um, and um, and and your your was chair who came last time did did notice that and then I mean there there are it's that accountability piece and we want to make sure that the biggest component as as an SCP starts the process and goes through that initial visit is is there capacity to grow and sustainability can the program sustain itself can the program actually uh, pay that membership fee along with everything else because it's great that we we do get we often get supplemental programs you only have to have six students minimum oh, six wow. students minimum oh wow yeah it wow. used to be 12 now it's six but i always go to them and say well where are you going to get the rest of them well <laughs> we need this to attract parents yes. so as soon as but they don't understand that there's that accountability aspect of it. And then we look at everything else. We don't just look at the business component, but we also look at, you know, what kind of instruction are you giving? Do you have qualified people to be teaching these courses, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's, it's all of that that impacts that initial visit. Um, and, and I've got to say that. So the, the, more, team, the more ducks in a row, the less they have to clean up right then. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've had supplemental programs, even schools say, oh, we want to get it WASC accredited. I go, that is fantastic. How many students do you have? Oh, we don't have any yet. <laughs> well, where are you located? Oh, no, we're thinking we need WASC accreditation in order to open. I said, no, 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 no. You've got to be open at least six months. Okay. Um, at least six months for us to it. come and do a visit because we've got to have some data students. yeah six months six students yes <laughs> well Ty tyler and i you know we've we actually tried to help everyone initially so similar to what you're saying um because you know essentially while it's our software it's not it's it takes a village and mm -hmm. you know we're so blessed that we have an amazing community globally um where all of us lock arms and and are constantly trying to make our businesses and the software that supports us better um, so what we found is similar to, to what you're saying, 
the 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 really you know the uh, when you're just starting out, then what you can do is you can know that teacher zone was these support systems are in place as you start to gain traction. But ultimately, you know, Tyler and I found that it was um, so much easier for all of us to support one another when you already have some, you know, in, in our case, we, we like programs to have at least ideally three or more instructors. You know, mm -hmm. we, work, we work with some that are mom and pop single uh, programs, but, you know, overall, the more instructors you get, obviously, the better your systems have to be just to manage that. Right. And, and to give so, you an idea, like our software mm -hmm. set up to run, have super admin accounts over multiple locations and divisions of one entity. So like those are, we have, we have um, accounts with, you know, over 200 teachers and six locations and 2000 students and whatever. So the, the software handles all that. But we understand that just like kids are being born all the time, those are all of our customers. Those are the people that are going to make an impact 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. Businesses are being born. And so that's kind of how we filter, just like you guys do with the six students, six months. And by the way, entrepreneurs out there, six student, six months in an entrepreneur life is like a weekend. Six months goes by in two seconds. So well, and I, I spoke to a new customer yesterday um, who uh, is currently the only instructor at his school <laughs> and which is how we all start. Um, and uh, we were talking about a lot of different things. And what was really clear, you know, at the end of the call and he was like, wow, is he has worked so hard on his curriculum. It's amazing. But it really brought to the forefront of the um he needs to start hiring and, and staffing up because by keeping it just him, he's not creating the systems that are necessary to give the students more and more value. And the more value they get, the bigger your program can get. And the more people talk about you, the more growth, because then now you have all these amazing stories of, of growth and experience. And that's where we so, share the synergy with Wask. So Liz mm -hmm. and those action items. So cool. How are you going to get there? It's you and seven students. Well, here's what we've <laughs> seen work in the past, Mr. SEP, you know, and, and there, so you guys, I really love the synergy. Liz, it, it has been, we're just very grateful you came on. We did a podcast about accreditation like four years ago. And oh, we did. And, You're right. Yeah, yeah. And so we've got to send this to Dr. Haycraft, too, because he was on uh, talking about his experience, the old version of getting into WASC. So that's kind of a fun episode if you go back in time. Um, what uh, what have we not covered today, Liz, that you feel like is important to discuss, like at the very end? Any afterthoughts? Well, you know, if we're looking at six years ago, we had non-staff people doing the visits so they weren't hands-on we would just assign somebody to go and do the visits right. so now we've really um what what we've done is um we've really honed in and focused in on how we can assist and grow these this sep world within wasc um uh, tyler you and i chatted i don't know two months ago and you had no idea that uh, we had seps outside of california Oh, so, I was so yeah, I've been marketing and marketing and marketing for the past I, I would say three or four years since since um, I became a director and now senior director but but um, I've been able to market I've been able to bring in with my team some more um, SCPs across the United States um, and then there's there are different people who do the international, but I've been brought into the conversations because of, of my SCP experience. Wow. So this is a growing market. And I think that the, the important part of, of WASC and that SCP component uh -huh. is that validation. And it's that continuous improvement is how can we improve ourselves, not just for the better business bureau, but how can we improve the academic value of our business mm. for our clients, for our students, for our families to ensure that whatever they're paying outside of pocket, because it is that extra cost to take a class outside of the public school or if they're at a school, a private school that's costing $54,000. And yes, there are schools out there like right, that. Right. Um, 
And and so why am I paying fifty four thousand dollars? Why isn't my kid taking a class there? Well, they don't offer it there. We do. So as an right. SCP. So um, I, I think it's it's that value of having, again, that outsider come in that has that worldwide stamp of approval and understanding that we're just not here as auditors or the police or we're going to fix a problem for you, but we're going to help you improve yourselves and your organization. So, so you, know your, you know your language sounds like uh, mentoring and coaching. Absolutely. Right? And that's what we always do. And we're doing a lot more of that. We're much more hands-on with um, mentoring and coaching. When, when Tyler had mentioned that he's going to be sending me uh, sections of the report, we didn't do that. Not even three years ago. We just started that two years ago because because I was looking at these reports saying, whoa, OK. And then when we do the visit, we're seeing two totally different pictures here. So um, mm. or two different types of programs. So we want to ensure that when you do the report and we ask those questions during the visit, that they triangulate, that they go together. Got it. Love it. So I, I hope that everyone listening and by the way, for all of our teachers own tribe out there, you all are, I mean, are You're already amazing. Yeah, yeah, because you guys are already, already have super, yeah, super successful programs. There's so hundreds of you out there. You're go, go to the call website. Call is. Yeah, go to the website and do that now because you guys are ready. If you okay. aren't with us currently, then obviously you could go to our website and reach out for a demo so we can show you that site too. So you can start this process of leveling up your business, right. which is like, all that we think about, you know, every day, it's like, how can we just, you know, lay one brick better? You know, if we get a little bit better each day before we know it, we have a wall, you know, before you know it, you've created some really neat things. Um, Liz, well, thank uh, let's you so get that much. website out there one more time. So it's A-C-S-W-A-S-C dot org. Yes. A-C-S-W-A-S-C dot org. And, uh, and real quick, why don't we just, uh, what's your email, Liz? Can we give them that? Of course. And, and actually, my cell number, you can give my cell number because we want all of these SCPs to be accredited. Um, right. So um, my email is E-O-B-E-R-R-E-I-T-E-R -E -E at A-C-S-W-A-S-C, so it's W-A-S-C dot org. Perfect. And then um, my everything number is uh, area code 626-290-2126. And um, I, I look forward to You're whoever's going to be out there. Let's so, get ready. Um, Fun fact, Chris. We yeah. were one of the first 20 SEPs with WASC. Did you know oh. that? And since then, they're beyond, I think, two to three hundred of them. And I had no clue about that. So meanwhile, I'm all scared. Oh, and they're probably like scared, too. <laughs> they're, we were there. Yeah, we're, we're growing like crazy. And it's and it's fantastic because, again, SEP such as yours are offering classes that schools cannot offer because they can't afford the teachers or they, they just Mm -hmm. They can't offer it because of scheduling and or students' schedules are impacted. And SEPs like yours are also becoming vendors to charter schools yep. that are independent studies or or the type popular. of homeschool. So, so that's another area that's growing as well. And I can't wait for the charter rules to stop paying in arrears. And if they could figure that out for these businesses that are mom and pops or growing businesses to pay a month after services, uh, that's a whole different podcast. We might need to get a couple of the professionals from the charter world, and we know the big ones, on a <laughs> podcast, Chris, and say, what is going on? How can yeah. you work? Because it's funny. There, they, they don't quite get it with regard to mom and pops. Yeah. They, it's like, sorry, uh, for instance, Liz, we don't use charters at Los Rios because, because they make you front payroll before they pay you. And right. so a lot of schools, unfortunately, have to bear that burden 
um, mm -hmm. before they're able to uh, get remunerated. So, I mean, that's a whole other topic. But yeah, the, hey, but I, but hey, we have a lot of the universe right now, and we're going to get some guests on so they can talk about it with us. And then they can let everybody know, like, don't worry, it's fine. You're doing it wrong, hopefully. Or we can change it. So, Liz, <laughs> you are awesome. Um, Maybe we well, can have you on in a year again and see how everybody's doing or something. Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. Well, and after yeah, you have hundreds of our folks reach out to you, then, um, you know, we'll, we'd love to hear a bunch of success stories and stuff. The, uh, I wanted to just reiterate that if you teach anything, reach out because yep. you, you, um, except bar bartending school, unless that somehow <laughs> applies to home ec, but I don't think they're going to really be able to no, connect. Yeah, there stuff. might be some things and you know, if you the aren't in that, right. That are bartending all day at home. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right message for K through 12. So, let, so but, but yeah. no, don't, like Chris said, don't be afraid. Send it in. If you're a lesson business, mm -hmm. making an impact, having people grow athletically. Coaching programs, yeah. martial arts, you know, anything, because those could be PE, supplementary PE programs. And so for those of you also, you'd mentioned, I just wanted to throw that out there, some of the, um, with the, uh, expeditions, the academic expeditions. And so there's so many uh, learning programs out there that do all sorts of exploratory expeditionary learning. And so if you have that kind of program, so just know that it's not limited to the arts. This is open to other supplementary um, arts and language, I should say. What's uh, missing at the school and does your lesson business fill it? That would be the first hmm. question is, is what's missing and, and don't, and don't pigeonhole it. Call ask liz just gave you all of her credentials everything liz is now you have access so our members our <laughs> listeners have access to the one of the main directors at wask use it and liz and chris it's like you. christmas yeah, it's <laughs> In July. <laughs> win, everybody. Uh, again, everybody, Liz, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in. Uh, this was the Teacher Zone with Chris and Tyler, uh, sponsored, of course, by TeacherZone.com. And uh, please go get our ebook if you haven't yet, TeacherZone.com slash chaos. And that's the chaos to culture, five stages of growth that we all grow through. That ebook is free for you. Head out there. And again, hit Liz up. It was awesome having you guys, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, buddy.